and said, not guilty, justified. I see them just as if they had never sinned. Well, does that mean that here on earth, you and I are never going to sin again? <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wish it meant that. It saved me a lot of trouble and a lot of convicted nights and things when I know I've done wrong. But no, it, it doesn't mean that. It, it means what we're going to look at now, okay? It, it really means what we're going to look at now. Because he goes on to say, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also, what? Glorified. Glorified. Now, I don't know about you, Christian friend, but that's the part I'm looking more forward to. What does it mean to be glorified, by the way? Who was glorified on earth? Jesus. You know what it means to be glorified? This is, one of, this is why all of my life ministry, one of my favorite verses of Scripture in all the Bible is 1 John 3, 2. You know what it says in 1 John 3, 2? Beloved, now are we the sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. One of these days, I know you're going to find it astonishing looking at Brother Mickey, but I'm telling you the truth. For one of these days, I'm going to be like Jesus. And if you're a born-again child of God, guess what? You're going to be like Jesus. If that's not true, the Bible's a lie, and we can throw the Bible away and go our merry way and do whatever we want to. But if the Bible's true, then one of these days... We're going to be like Him. That is our glorification. That's when you and I will be glorified, made unto the likeness of Christ. And I, boy, I, sometimes I just want to let my imagination run wild, thinking about what it'll be like to have a glorified body like Jesus had when He came forth from the grave. You ever thought about it? Jesus, I mean, if this, if this building were locked up tighter than a drum and nobody could go in or out, all of a sudden Jesus could just appear right in the midst of all of us. You believe that? Yes. He did it. He did it. You better believe it because he did it. I mean, the apostles were there behind locked doors. You know, and all of a sudden, here's Jesus. Well, what, did he come through the wall? Did he come through the ceiling? Did he come through the floor? I don't know. He disappeared. Do you realize you and I are probably, as far as I know, will be like it. We'll be able to do that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? We're going to be like Jesus. I don't know about you, Christopher, but to me, that's about the best news I can think of. <laughs> Brother Roger talking about the news on television. I wonder if they're going to put that news on television when it happens. Say, look, all these people were glorified. <laughs> you know, there's going to be people left here. You know that, right? I guess CN will still be operating, I imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're still going to be reporting the news uh, on the news channels. Well, how are they going to report it when we all all of a sudden disappear and go on to heaven? I'm not going to be here to find out, but if some of you hang around, let me know. <laughs> don't, don't hang around. <laughs> don't get left behind. Make sure everything's right. Make sure that you're in a position not only to be justified, but to be glorified. And when we're glorified and made like Him. Now, that could happen while we're still alive, or it could happen after we're five and a half or six feet under. Amen. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. If you've already passed away, if they've already put your old carcass in a hole in the ground, don't worry. You're not getting cheated. I used to think I was getting cheated if I wasn't alive when the Lord came back. You're not getting cheated. If you're in the grave, you get a five and a half, six foot head start. Dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain 
Now, I still think I'm going to be in that crowd. May not be. It's up to God. But I've preached all of my ministry that I think I was going to be alive when Jesus comes again. And I still believe that. Better happen in the next eight years. Because I think at 84 I'm kicking out. <laughs> I'll tell you why if you want to know later, but I think at 84 I'm kicking out. I don't want to break tradition. I'll go ahead and tell you. Grandpa died. My grandpa Fugit died at 84. My dad died at 84. The Pope died at 84. My boyhood hero, Duke Snyder, center fielder for the Brooklyn Dodgers, died at 84. My, my favorite singer, Andy Williams, died at 84. And so I, I think at 84 I don't want to break tradition. I'll just kick out. But I think the Lord might come back before the next eight years. Amen? Amen? He could come back today. Could come back tomorrow. Remember one thing. You've heard it many, many times right here from this mouth of this preacher. One of the most unsure things in life is tomorrow. One of the most unsure things in life is tomorrow. Nobody knows what's going to happen before tomorrow. We might all be gone. If the Lord splits those eastern skies and comes in the clouds, we're all going to be gone. Amen? So we don't know what's going to happen. That's why the Bible says, Boast not thyself of the morrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow. May not even be here. But if we're gone, that means we've been glorified. Amen? And that's the final step in your and my spiritual progression. Eventually, we'll be glorified and made like Him. Aren't you glad God's making a spiritual progression happen in our lives? Even when we don't realize it, God's doing a work. God's given a spiritual progression for you and for me, according to the Word of God. And we're going to, one of these days, guess what? We're going to have it made. <laughs> We're going to go to heaven for all of eternity and have it made. That's good news. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to it, aren't you? Amen? You don't want to go? <laughs> You're not like that little boy, are you? Preacher asked, how many of you want to go to heaven? Everybody raised their hand but one little boy. He said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? He said, yeah, but I thought you was getting up a load right now. <laughs> he wanted to go, but he didn't want to go right now. <laughs> Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go right now. Amen. <laughs> but whenever he's ready, just be ready. Be ready. Amen. All right, let's stand together. If you're not ready, there's no better time to get ready than right now. No better place.